Whoa! Whoa! Hmm. What's wrong? Whoa! Hello there. Um. <clears throat> It's Jessica and welcome back to Seduce Me to the Demon War and we're with Sam the Sprout and last episode was really um very sinful let's just go with that <laughs> and aside from that Sam is really angry because now after finding out that his father was the reason why I'm back in the Abyssal Plains and um there you see Diana and I, I you know I feel bad for like attacking her because I, I actually really like Diana and um of course Sam's notion of her um from seducing one is like she wanted to you know steal um him away and go back to the demon world and whatever um so yeah of course he's mad at her but I didn't expect my character to, like choke her out and then Sam choked her out as well so it ended up really bad but Senna was there thank goodness the Cyana ship is still there so we're all good now and I met Eric's wife as well and you know what I was reading the comments in um I think it was the episode one everybody was like I wonder how you're gonna react to Eric's wife and whatever and like honestly like I think she's adorable and she's like the way she was talking I'm like yeah this is this is um definitely Eric's wife <laughs> I like her her uh, character design though it's pretty cool so Let's continue on with Sam, and hopefully he's not angry. The walk to our room became silent journey. Sam and I held hands, but for some reason, there were no words to say between us. This entire situation sat in my mind and festered and plagued my thoughts and caused me to remain speechless. All this seems so unreal and hard to imagine, let, let alone believe. How is this possible? I felt Sam gently squeeze my hand, causing me to look over at him. Was he feeling my anxiousness somehow? Hey, you sure you're all right? I stared at him a bit longer before replying. Um, I want to say yes, that we're okay. But after what? Because it seems a little bit different from Eric's route. I don't know how to explain it, so I'm going to say no. I wasn't all right. All this muddled mess, I couldn't help but worry. It had to have been very obvious anyway for Sam to notice and ask. Sam frowned a bit and released my hand to wrap her arm around my shoulders. We'll get back. We will? I couldn't deny my doubt and enter my mind and influence my response, but Sam gave me a small shake, nodding. We will. Aww. I eventually let it aside and nodded as well. He was right. I needed to shake this feeling out of my mind. Sam is sweet. Look how comforting he is. My goodness. Sam and I were guiding through the hallway until we finally reached our room, which happened to be the ambassador room I had slept in before. It was good to know that I was going to be in a place I recognized. I sat on the bed and let her aside, feeling the worry of the en of the entire situation sink and fade into my mind. I wasn't alone anymore, and Sam was willing to fight for me to return home. It was unexpected, but it was amazing to have Sam here. Sam looked around the room, taking in the space. Fancy room. <laughs> yeah, apparently it's an open ambassador's room. They let me sleep in here when I came. That was how long ago? Like a day? Sam laughed and stuffed his hands into his pocket. What was so funny? Oh, fuck. I forgot the time difference between oh, this yeah. world and the human world. What? Wait, time difference? Yeah, time goes slower here and stuff. So, like, while you've been here a day, you've only been gone from the human world for four or five hours. Wait, huh? I was only gone for four or five hours. How is that possible? Then again, I was in another plane, so it was somehow understandable. My brain just couldn't wrap around it, so I held my head, staring at the floor in shock. Sam laughed again and walked over to me, sitting beside, sitting by my side, before wrapping an arm around my shoulder in comfort. At least we found you. If it weren't for Damien and Twyla, it would have taken us longer. I nodded, relieved to re relief regardless on how I was found. While I couldn't get back, there was a beacon of hope now, which replaced my previous worry and concern. I leaned my head into Sam's shoulder, feeling exhausted. Exhaustion hit me like a wave, but I didn't want to sleep just yet. I was with Sam, so I wished I'd stay up a bit longer and be awake with him. Sam? Mm hmm I didn't know how to say this, but I just wanted to be awake longer. I looked up at him as he turned his head and looked down at me, patiently waiting for me to ask whatever he assumed I was going to ask. Help me stay awake! Help me stay awake! Is this sinning more? Is more sinning happening? If I wanted to stay awake longer, then Sam needed to help me do that. Sam looked down at me and turned our bodies gently to face one another. What do you want me to do? Anything. What does this mean? Hello, what does this mean? <laughs> I didn't want our reunion to end for the day with us going to bed. A kiss, a hug, a conversation, anything was acceptable as long as I was going to be awake for that much longer. 
Sam gently lifted my chin and lowered his head to kiss me, allowing me the choice to take his lips with mine and stopping a mere centimeter away. I took it and melted into the kiss, wrapping my arms around him. My head and my heart became full of Sam. Okay. <laughs> Feeling his heartbeat against my chest, tasting his lip against my own. Memories flooded back to us holding one another, and be I began to mentally thank God for letting us be together again. Sam wrapped his arms around my waist, pulling me close to him, but not taking us away any further. The kiss was slow, intimate, and romantic in every form. That was yet another thing I love about Sam. He knew how to take things slow with me, and knew when not to go deeper than that. That's good, because, you know, he, he gotta go fast all the time. You know, if you know what I mean. <laughs> he respected me, loved me, and wanted to protect me with his entire being. I was blessed to have him as mine and mine alone. As we pulled away at last, Sam let out a small, a small grin paint his face. Well... I guess one good thing came out of this. I get to kick my old man's ass. I knew Sam hated his father, but was, was this really a good thing? In retrospective, yes. Morally, it was questionable. You really hate him, don't you? The smile on Sam's face began to slowly diminish to an angry expression. His eyes full of rage, but his mouth pressed into a fine line. Yeah, I do. Yeah, no shit he does. All the brothers do. <laughs> Sam slowly stood back up and walked towards the fireplace. Keep staring, blah, 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 staring into it with his... Hands clenched into fists at the side. That bastard made me and my brothers miserable for years. We finally escaped. And then he grows the balls to try to steal the woman I love away from me. Sam. That bastard kills for fun. He burns kingdoms to the ground for not submitting to him. And murders hundreds just because he can. He has a fucking harem of people and replaces every one of them with prisoners of war by the handful. If he had gotten his hands on you... If he even touched you, I would have. I. Oh my gosh, he's so, he's so like. Oh god, I can't explain it. His fist tightened at his side. I stared wide at as blood, little by little, began to drip through the crevice of his fingers. Oh my goodness, what the fuck? I stood and rushed over, laying myself across his back, pressing my my forehead into his into the back of his neck. Sam, it's okay. Is it? I looked up as Sam turned around to face me. He didn't touch me, as his hands were still wounded from the, his tight fists. But his expression dimmed a bit into a look of sadness. I would have never forgiven myself if you fell into his hands. I stared deep into Sam's gaze, seeing the fear behind them. I was scared as well, but thankful to be saved by Sero and Diana. Somehow, someone above was watching over me carefully, and I thank God for that. I think it's Grandfather the Wizard. He's a wizard, right? <laughs> I wrapped my arms around Sam's neck and leaned my head to his, pressing my forehead on his own. I'm safe now. Diana and Sero saved me from that. Thank God for that. Sam wrapped his arms around me, fists still closed, and pulled me to him tightly. I could see him biting his lips, almost piercing the skin, but maintained some form of control. I frowned, but allowed silence to pass between us. We'll defeat the demon lord and go home soon. Sam nodded against my forehead, remaining quiet. We had to let this pass. We had to move on and mentally prepare ourselves for our war. Sam would get his anger quelled, and we would be able to return home at last. We had to. Sam and I eventually pulled away from each other, looking... Locking our gazes lovingly. Come on. We can't stay up all night. I know. Wish we could, because, you know, I bet, I bet sinning would happen. <laughs> Sam lifted his hand, which now was free of wounds and blood, and guided me to bed, crawling in after me as I settled between the sheets. Sam and I embraced lovingly and let the darkness of the night take over, bringing us to a quiet slumber. The darkness of sleep was usually a friend of mine, only showing me the nightmares of the rarest occasion. The nightmare of me dying sent shivers down my body as I recalled it, but I knew it was only a dream. Would I have one like that again? I hope not. Would I have no choice in the matter if any if another came? That was another story. Uh oh. I opened my eyes to find myself in the mouth of a cave that descended beneath the earth. Behind and above me was a bright light, where I could see my friends and family. However, as I looked down in the darkness I caught I caught the sight of Sam walking away further into the cave. Sam? He didn't answer. Sam continued for it, losing himself in the dark. I instantly began to follow, forgetting about the light for a moment before stopping and looking back. My family had a look of despair while my friends held onto each other, watching me with heartbroken faces. Was this some sort of message? Was I following Sam into a, into a place my friends and family could not be in? Was this my future? I was became torn. What was I going, what was I going to do? You are not... Worthy. What the fuck is happening? All of a sudden, the dragon is being full of fire and bare outline of Sam flushed before burning away the light of the flames. He couldn't let out a scream of pain as he was instantly burned to ash. Oh god, what is happening? Run! Run! 
Diana's voice echoed through the air, but I was frozen in place, watching the flames rush at me and taking me as well. If I ran back, my heart would be scarred forever with the memory of flames taking my love away. If I stayed, I would die with Sam. I stood in the middle, unsure of what to do. The flames took me. I woke up in a hot sweat. Ugh! Oh no! I gripped the sheets that I sat up, staring at the far wall before looking around. My heart was beating wildly. A sweat ran down my cheeks at the side of my head. Another nightmare. This time, however, Sam woke up with me. Whoa! Whoa! What's wrong? Whoa! Hello there. <clears throat> I looked to Sam, seeing him not burnt or as ashes, but perfectly okay. I turned towards him and wrapped my arms around him tightly. Now desperate to not let him go, Sam, despite being surprised, wrapped his arms around me and held me close. Two nightmares before leaving, both leaving me and Sam engulfed in flames. I died in the first and he died in the second. How many bad endings does Sam have? <laughs> what was I going to believe anymore? Sam rubbed my back and gently planted a kiss on my shoulder. Hey, it's okay, all right? It was a stupid nightmare. But you died. <laughs> You know I can handle anything that comes my way. Don't say that. Don't say that. Can he really? He was strong and fast, but he was he powerful enough to withstand whatever had let loose those flames and swallowed him whole? You are not worthy. What did the voice mean? How was Sam not worthy? What was he not worthy of? There were a million questions running through my mind, and none of them could be answered. At least not in that moment. I simply rested my head on Sam's chest and let him pull us back down onto the bed to sleep. Whatever happens, I'll always be here. All right. Please don't die. Oh my god, I'm scared. <laughs> oh my god, I nodded and closed my eyes, praying that I would not see the nightmare again. As fate was kind once more, I slept peacefully and the re I slept peacefully for the remainder of the night. Slowly woke up from my sleep, feeling the ache of the morning consume and rush through my body relentlessly as a in an attempt to keep me contained in bed. I didn't mind. I was pressed against the warm chest whose at once whose arms are adored to be in. The nightmares plagued my thoughts, but my heart fluttered in reality. Knowing what I was feeling in the physical world was what I was supposed to care about. Hey, shirtless Sam again. I like this. <laughs> I looked up at Sam's sleeping face, giggled at the sight of his, of his messy bed hair. Sam slowly woke from the sound of my laughter, blinking his sleep away, and stared down at me. <clears throat> Morning. Morning. I smiled and kissed Sam down the lips and to help him to help rouse him, only to end up being pulled onto a tight, loving embrace with my head buried in his shoulder. Did you sleep okay? The second time, yeah. Sam nodded in understanding against my shoulder as I wrapped my arms around him. I felt so warm and safe within the confines of his embrace that the thought of the nightmares I had, van I had vanished from my mind. It would come back, but it was gone for now. Let's kiss him because fuck this. I pulled back and kissed Sam once again, smiling happily and running my fingers along his back. Sam gently squeezed me and kissed me back, melting into the embrace between us. Morning kisses with Sam felt wonderful and I didn't want to get up or pull away. I simply desired to relish in the feeling I had with Sam and let him completely take over my thoughts. Aw, that's sweet. Hey. Yeah? Since we're in the demon world, do you think that- I opened my eyes and looked over my shoulder, trying to understand what he was insinuating. When it finally came to me, I held my breath in realization. The demon marriage? You don't have to decide right now, but before we go back, maybe think about it? I wasn't sure what to say. My mind danced across the idea of binding my soul to Sam, but at what cost? I'll think about it. Sam nodded understanding, kissing my shoulder. I knew it was something Sam really wanted, but was it something I was willing to go through? Oh god, please don't. Please, Jesus, don't let me, like... Oh, I'm scared I'm gonna pick the bad ending. <laughs> Sam gently loosened his embrace and pulled me away to look, up, to look at me with a tired smile. I don't want to get up yet. I laughed, knowing how Sam was, uh, how Sam operated in the morning. He was definitely not a morning person, so seeing him curl up into me, ask permission to stay in bed, was endearing at the sight. It reminded me how much I loved him. My heart warmed as I smiled and kissed his forehead. Then we don't have to. We can sleep a little longer if you want. Sam smiled and closed his eyes, pulling me against his chest with a heavy, with a hearty chuckle. Good. We can go eat later. Our peace was broken, unfortunately, by the sound of knocking at the door. Sam and I let out a simultaneously groan. Our plans were ruined. GO AWAY! <laughs> Sam, we brought breakfast. Oh well, God. eat later! Are you seriously going to argue with me? Come on, it's like 9am. 
Now I was getting upset, but I wanted to stay in bed, feel Sam's arms around me for a little longer. Was that so much to ask? Screw breakfast. We have three or more hours until noon. It's high noon. Oh my god, just high noon. already. We're burning high daylight noon. here. Sam and I whined, now irritated that our plans to sleep in became ultimately impossible. However, we both understood that today was a new day and we had to start preparing to take on the Demon Lord. I slowly rose and sat up in bed, yawning as Sam be begrudgingly followed suit. All right, all right, come in. The door opened and poured the Incubi brothers and their wives, carrying plates of food each. James and Iridessa held out their two extra plates for me and Sam. Thanks, Dessa. You're welcome, Sparky. Sparky. <laughs> Thank you, James. Of course. James and Iridessa moved away from us as we both looked down at our plates. On it were fruit slices, bread, cheese, and some sort of jerky I didn't recognize. It was probably safe, knowing that the others were eating it as well. Sam, however, lowered his plate to his lap and looked over at his brothers. So, what's the plan? Well, we should probably take the next couple of days to train properly. Since we're in Lilith Castle, we'll have access to training equipment. Lilith Castle? This place has a name? The boys and Irene, Eric's wife, nodded, nodded in reply. Sam stuffed a stick of jerky in his mouth and began to chew on it as Damien began to explain. The first succubus, Lilith, was exiled here after being cast out of Eden by the heavens. She became a demon, and soon began to breed more incubi and succubi than the world could control. So, was Lilith an angel before? Is that what I'm sensing? Wait, Lilith as in Lilith from the Bible? Yes. During her time here, she established a kingdom with this very castle at its heart. It's a pretty castle indeed. I've never had the pleasure of coming here. Irene reminds me of someone. Like, an anime character? I just can't put my finger on it, I don't know. Meh, I'm not really a fan of it. Sam swallowed a bite of jerky he had in his mouth and licked his lips, joining the conversation. Alright, so we train until we can't anymore. Obviously, we'll need breaks in between, but we can't afford to let a day go by without intense training. We only have a week, after all. Yeah. Worry began to bubble in the back of my mind. Everyone was willing to step up and start training the But Eric was right. We only had one week to prepare for the Demon Lord. Would we be strong enough in time? You fear too soon, child. Uh, what the hell? Huh? I strained my back up to look around, hearing the voice from my dream echo through the air. Everyone else looked at me curiously, wondering why I spoke up. Wait, what? Did you say something? I looked around at, I looked around at everyone, seeing their confused faces. Did they not hear the voice? They cannot hear me. Oh, it's like Orabel. I shook my head, rubbing it gently and, and with a nervous laugh. Sorry, I thought I missed something. The confusion in everyone's face dis dissipated as everyone got back to the topic at hand. One I couldn't remember or focus on. My thoughts went back to the voice, wondering how it was speaking to me and how it knew I was thinking. I am closer than you imagine. Is that God? Who is this? What the fuck? What do you mean? Be patient, child. The time for answers will come soon enough. Also, who was the voice of this guy? Because you have a nice voice. I grew more and more concerned and confused. What was the spirit talking about? <laughs> I am no mere spirit. Then what are you? That I cannot tell you yet. When the time comes, you will know. Morgan Freeman, is that you? Because, <laughs> you know, Morgan Freeman always voices God, so... This was mildly scary. A voice in my head was speaking to me and I could only speak back to it in my thoughts without anyone knowing what was going on. I looked around to see everyone speaking to each other, but I couldn't focus on what they were saying. All I could focus on was the voice in my head. Answers will come when the time is right. For now, I will bid you farewell. Uh, okay. He kind of sounds like Corypheus from Dragon Age. I, I don't know. Wait! Whoa! Wait, what? I didn't realize I spoke aloud until everyone looked at me again. I looked to Damon, wondering if he heard everything that was going on in my head, but he seemed just as confused, if not if not, not more so than the others. Uh, you alright? Uh, oh no, okay, I need to save. I, oh god, I need to save. I feel like I should tell them. Okay, I'm fucking telling them. I sighed. They had to know what was going on. Well, I just heard a voice in my head. Huh? A voice in your head? But I didn't hear any other voice but yours. Did it sound like anyone you know? 
sound like Morgan Freeman or Curfius. I looked at it, I, I shook my head, remembering the sound of it. It was deep and echoey, masking with an unre- unrelatable trace from it. For all I knew, it was some sort of illusionary creation of my own mind. Then again, if I created it, then Damon would have been able to hear it. I sighed and rubbed my head. It was some sort of deep voice telling me to be patient and not be afraid. It wouldn't t- tell me its name. I became worried about everyone thinking I was crazy. I knew I wasn't, but I was definitely sounding like someone who wasn't who hasn't had their, what the hell, who wasn't mentally there. Sam, however, wrapped an arm around me and hugged me to his side. Well, whoever that voice is, it's right. There's nothing to be afraid of. Okay. I wouldn't be too sure about that just yet. Hey, Diana and Seto. Everyone in the room turned their heads to see Diana and Seto standing at the door. Diana stepped further into the room as Seto stood at attention, watching her. You five have been gone during the ten years of this war. You do not seriously believe that you will be ready for this in a mere week. Do you? Diana seemed firm and serious. I couldn't understand why, but a part of me felt like felt a bit angry that she shut down our pep talk. Sam glared at Diana. And if we do? Then it is a foolish mistake. How so? Ten years of absence can be unkind to one's abilities. That is true, because they only fought Malix. And Malix isn't, like, big as their father, you know what I mean? To be fair, it has only been two years for us. Regardless. When was the last time any of you actually fought in battle? Science consumed the room. She was right. However, they weren't. we weren't willing to give up that easily. I stood and placed my plate on the bed behind me. Why does it matter? We're going to defeat the Demon Lord either, either way. We will. But there is no reason to try and breed ideas of false hope that it will be easy. Too many lives have been lost in this war with the hope that they'll all survive. It's better to be realistic. That's true. We have to be. The tone of her voice echoed with a heavy warning. No doubt she seemed hundreds of or thousands of death in the war at first hand, but now is not the time to doubt ourselves. Oh my god, now I'm thinking about Diana's backstory and it's making me sad. Ugh. Sam stood up as well, standing on the side of, standing by my side in defiance. Fuck that. If you're right, then hope's the only thing we got. Seto stepped up to Diana's side, giving Sam a blank stare in return for his m- mistress. Hope can only take you so far. Do you truly believe it will help you defeat the Demon Lord? I felt Sam take my hand and nod, affirming his words. I smiled and squeezed his hand, agreeing. Seto and Diana stared at us, with Diana crossing her arms. Something was on Diana's mind as she stared at Sam, just from looking at her eyes. What was it? Can you say that with confidence? I can. Want me to? Not to derail the topic, but this is a waste of time. We should be preparing for war, not bickering about if we can or not. Everyone listen to the baby! A moment of silence passed through the room as Diana stared at Sam sternly. However, she was distracted, distant from the conversation as if she was stalling time to have her thoughts wander. What was she... What was keeping her real attention? Well, I'm not going to argue about this. Believe what you wish. Okay. Sam and I waited and watched as Diana lowered her arms to her side with a sigh. However, we do have something to discuss. Okay. Diana ran her hand through her hair and looked towards the room, pressing her lips into a fine line. So, about all of you participating in the war, you all obviously need to train. I need to pick a traitor! And in Eric's route, I pick Seto, because I actually really love Seto, and, you know, he, he's, he's adorable. He's the most adorable one out of all of them. But for this route, I'm gonna pick somebody completely different. I'm just not entirely sure who to pick, you know what I mean? So I'm just gonna save here, just in case I fuck up. Okay... Uh, I want you to set her again because I love him, but now I gotta pick somebody else. I don't need a trainer because fuck you, no. We know Taekwondo, guys. Um, honestly, I feel like for Sam, I should go with Sergeant. I'm not- I'm being stereotypical because they're both brutes, but I just feel like- Because the way that Sam fights, I feel like it would be beneficial if I fight like Sam with my fists becoming a brute, and she knows Taekwondo, so this kinda kinda helps, you know what I mean? With Eric, he had the tentacles and whatever, and that's why I felt like it was better if if my character, well obviously because I picked Seto, because you know, I feel like he's close to Diana, so he must know something really well, so that's why I picked Seto to begin with, but at the same time, we learned how to use a weapon, so I feel like that helped with Eric, because Eric uses his tentacles, and I feel like with Sam, I should go with the brute method. So I'm gonna choose Sergeant in this one. Hopefully I don't make a mistake. Diana nodded. Sergeant was the military commander, and I could tell that he was strong just by looking at him. He was my best bet in learning how to defend myself. With that, Diana turned on her hair and left the room. Finish eating. 
Afterwards, you should start training. All right, I love that Sam is still shirtless. This makes me happy. <laughs> Everyone nodded in, the, in affirmation as Diana and Seto left the room. Well, it looks like we'll be busy for the next couple of days. <laughs> this will be fun. Of course. Man, training's gonna suck. <laughs> Matthew. It'll be worth it though. Damien's right. As we finished eating, everyone left or to, tra to either train or to do the things on their own. I was left with, with my own work, determined to be prepared for what was to come. The demon lord wasn't going to win. I wouldn't let him. I, ch I chose to train with Sergeant. He seemed skilled in combat and he was a commander of the main army, so I trusted him to train me to be strong and dependable. I didn't want to be silent observer in this war. So I would pull my own weight. Sup, Sergeant. Sergeant led me outside the castle and onto the empty training grounds. Footprints and, and were showed where the space was well used, but the only ones in the area at the moment were Sergeant and myself. The air seemed fresh and faint from the smell of flowers and fauna swept past my nose. However, I didn't get time to enjoy the atmosphere. Human, I will not waste my breath hollering at you like a soldier, but I expect you to listen like one. Now stop sniffing the air and face me. Okay. I quickly nodded and turned around to face Sergeant. I pressed my arms to my sides, ready to, for attention for the next order. Sergeant stared hard at me, making me slightly nervous. How is he going to train me? Sergeant began to slowly walk around my body, letting my eyes, letting his eyes trail up and down my form in an analytical gaze. I stood still, not sure if he wanted me to follow along and knowing he would command me, command me to move if I needed to. He remained silent, walking in circles around me like a slowly en enroaching vulture. I felt a twinge of irritation and lack of action. I was supposed to be training. Let's remain silent because I feel like this will benefit us. Also, I like his little um, drapery. I don't know what this is. It's barely covering. It's just covering his um, that part. <laughs> so I'm just going to remain silent for this. I had to remain calm. He was probably figuring out what I could do and couldn't based on my body type. It was a smart thing to do rather than teach me something that I might not be able to do. What wasn't smart was feeling his hand pushed in my back to shove me forward, making me land on my hands and my knees. Hey! I looked back, suddenly angry at Sergeant. What the hell was that for? I looked at- I locked eyes at Sergeant, seeing him cross his arms, almost smirking down at me. Hmm. So you do have some rage in you. Good. Yes, because Mika, or the main character, is fucking badass. What? Rage? Was I supposed to be angry? I quickly jumped up on my feet and stood up, brushing myself and glaring at Sergeant. Rage is a form of raw energy, wild like fire and tamed with patience. If used properly, rage can be very deadly. Very few demons can harness it, but brute demons are the masters of rage. That explains Sam a lot. <laughs> I felt a little enlightened. The rage was also a form of energy. I felt a small spark in my core. Remembering how angry I was with Sergeant and mentally noting what m mentally noting what I felt to be trapped into into rage energy instead of just felt of a regular emotion. Sergeant cracked his neck and landed on a small sigh. However, since you're a human, there's no guarantee that you can truly use your rage in battle. This is just a test to see what you can do. Okay. What if I can't harness it? Then you're shit out of luck. I don't have the time or patience to train you like a regular soldier, human. Now is your only chance not to fuck it up. Alright. I gulp silently. This is my only chance to try it? It definitely seemed like it was a challenge, but I, was I really up for it? Sergeant shook his head. Humans are really easy to read. Don't doubt yourself just yet, human. You haven't even started. Looking up at Sergeant, I can tell that he was being genuine. Still, I wasn't sure that I was able to do what he expected me to do. What could raged energy do anyway? I guess I would have to wait and learn. Sergeant rolled his shoulders and held up his hand, pointing at the trainer, training dummy that was set up in the middle of the field. As his hand hovered in the air, it began to slowly emanate a red aura. I stared wide at it as it began to grow in intense intensely. Watch closely, human. Soon, a black orb formed right in front of his open palm, wrapped in dark red lightning that seemed to arc over its surface. The orb grew larger and larger with each second that passed. As I looked over at Sergeant, I noticed his eyes were glowing a dark gold. His expression was full of anger, and his body was op opposing the emotion on his face with a calm and con concentrated stance. When the orb finally reached the size of a basketball, Sergeant pulled his hand away as the orb behind his back and thrust it forward, releasing the orb at its target. Like a lightning bolt, the orb flew forward and slammed into the training dummy, ripping it from its rod that was holding it up. However, Sergeant suddenly vanished from the spot and repeatedly from the flying dummy. What the? 
With a swift kick, Sergeant sent the dummy flying towards the surrounding forest, and the unfortunate dummy slammed in it and nearly exploded against the base of the tree, breaking apart from its pieces as it landed. I was shaking from the sight. How did he... Sergeant landed back on the ground and turned back to me, walking away from the result of the attack. Cool guys don't look at explosions, they just walk away. Something like that. <laughs> he cracked his hand, his cracked his hands and rolled his head, stretching his eyes as, as if he was just warming up. Th that was... Uh, don't finish your sentence. I was too dumbfounded to say anything. He was faster than I could catch and powerful enough to practically demolish the dummy. I began to fear what he he could do if I was if he wasn't tra just training or showing off. Sergeant then pointed at the second dummy and unhurried me forward. Now focus on your rage. You felt it already, but you need to rekindle it and capture it in your hand. We gotta go Super Saiyan. <laughs> my hand? Sergeant nodded before reaching over and lifting my arm up, positioning it like he had when he did the attack th to the first dummy. It clicked. He wanted me to do the same thing that he did. I looked back at the hand, suddenly nervous. Was I able to do the same thing he did? He was already trained in this, so he knew what to do. I was practically jumping into this without a life jacket. My nerves began to dance around the fear and shook my core. Even still, was rage something I wanted to try and use? It seemed like some sort of violated power, dangerous and deadly if not controlled properly. More so, if I got used to rage, would I become dependent on it? Was this something I really wanted to do? Uh, too many decisions! I gotta save! I gotta say yes. For the sake of the... Hopefully I'm doing the right thing. Oh god, I don't know. If Sergeant believed I could control it, then I had to believe him. He was the master of some kind of power, so he knew better than me. I focused back onto my hand, concentrating on trying to re re replicate Sergeant's attack. I tried to imagine the black orb reappearing on my palm and watching it grow, but nothing came to in reality. I began to get frustrated. Don't focus on the attack. Focus on your rage. Fuel it with reason and you will control it. Okay. The burning flame in my gut began to flicker, reminding me of the anger I felt before. I quickly latched onto it, tightening my stomach and focusing on making it burn brighter. I had to feel it somehow. Think of the human. Think, think of- Why would I think of Sam, you know what I mean? Think of the Demon Lord, fuck you! I felt myself begin to think of the Demon Lord, the bastard that brought me here, all for spite and I was trapped here until we killed him. I was sick of just imagining his laughter, his dark voice in the air. The more he spoke, the more I wanted to end him with my own hands. I wanted to see his faith myself and use my anger to show who, him who was stronger. I was forced to remain in this world and I couldn't do anything about it until we met face to face. I wanted to go home, but my asshole soon to be father-in-law trapped me here. He is an asshole. The more I thought of it, the more flames within me grew. My body became warm and he surged for through my veins in response. Whoa. Soon, my vision became clouded with a ruby haze, as if I was looking into the world through foggy red goggles. However, the one thing that I was able to focus on was the dummy ahead and between my fingers, glowing in the strange black aura. Was this how brood demons saw their enemies? Is this how Sam sees everything? The energy in my body slowly began to weave into my hand, forming a baseball-sized orb, slowly becoming bigger and bigger with each breath I took. I could hear Sergeant smirk behind me in pride. As the energy in the ore became almost too large to hold, I felt my body completely tense up and began to pick up around my body. I quickly brought the ore back and roughly pushed it forward towards my target. Now run at it! Uh, okay. At this shout, I quickly stepped forward. I began to hyper-focus onto the dummy as I, my orb slammed into its torso and it bent backwards at its stand. I felt enraged that I wasn't able to break it off, adding to the energy burning with my, in my body. Wanted to kick the shit out of it. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> I wanted to make it bust open like a pinata. If I had to do it with my own foot, then I would do it over and over until it was completely decimated, like how Sergeant dealt with his own training dummy. Suddenly I became face to face with the rush of it. I brought my leg back and slammed into the dummy's head, ripping it from its torso. The head flew back a couple of feet and skidded across the ground before rolling and stopping in the foot of the tree. My fury became out of control. I found myself becoming livid at the result of the attack, causing me to pump to pummel in a, f a flur flurry of punches into the remaining dummy torso, making it bounce off and slam itself into each impact. Uh-oh. My knuckles and fingers were aching from each impact of wave, pain rushed through them. I didn't give a damn, nor could I find a reason to. My mind became lost in the rage, and I continued to take on the non-living victim. Hey! Uh-oh. From behind me, a pair of large arms took themselves from my torso and yanked me back, locking my their hands behind my head and effectively holding my failing and twitching arms in place. Still, the blood red tint in the world didn't dull or, and my anger wasn't going away. I was pretty sure it was form foaming at the mouth, but my overwhelming fury overcame all my senses. Holy shit! Breathe, you little brute! 
My instincts began to kick in, forcing me to take in a hand of deep breath. With each inhale, my body became wrecked in a shivering lactic acid. With each exhale, the flame within my core began to slowly die. After what seemed like minutes within Sergeant's arm lock, the red within my eyes vanished even with the dribble, dribble around my lips seemed to vanish, leaving me in an aching mess of being and cursing at me slightly to go limp in Sergeant's arms. There you go. Jeez, you've got a lot of energy for a human. I slowly looked back at Sergeant as he released me and stretched out one of his arms up, causing my shoulders to creak and stretch out the ache within. I felt a bit embarrassed what I had done, but Sergeant stretched the other arm. He laughed. At least we can skip to teaching you how to control your rage. Uh, are you sure? How do I do that? I felt out of breath as my body became overwhelmed with a dull ache, probably from letting loose on the dummy. Sergeant tilted my head side to side and stretching my neck before running. His knuckles over my back, working out the unknown knots in it. Just breathe. When you're pissed, you take a step back and breathe. It's the same thing when using rage. Oh, okay. It seems so simple, but if it got out of the state I was in, then I was good enough to agree with it and not in, in understanding. Everything going fine out here? Sergeant and I looked over to see Diana walking over to us from the castle doors, crossing her arms and staring at both of us. We're good. We're just getting started. That's good to hear. I'm on my way to the training block now to work with the troops and just wanted to stop by. I was about to say you're going to hang out with your boyfriend, but I guess not. <laughs> As Diana nodded and turned, Sergeant Sally stepped away from me towards her. Succubus. Doubting my skills as a leader already, Commander? I stared wide at as Diana turned her head to look at Sergeant with a stern and almost degrading gaze. What the hell? Where did that come from? I could very faintly see the hands that glow layers of red before closing his eyes and letting it vanish with a breath. No, I wasn't. Then what is it? Nothing. What? Sergeant turned back to me and crossed his arms, so obviously irritated at Diana, but somehow unwilling to fight her about whatever was on his mind. As Sergeant turned away from her, Diana shook her head and started to walk away. You forget who trained the rebellion before you came around. Um, I know Diana's a bitch, but okay. Diana finally left, disappearing into the forest. Sergeant, however, maintained a, sto a stone, agitated facial expression. This was uncalled for, but that put a little perspective on things. She trained the rebellion before he came and took on the role of army commander. Sergeant shook his head. Some training you did back then, succubus. Uh, what? Sergeant? Sergeant lifted his head and looked at me before laying on his side. What? Are you okay? He seemed a bit muffed, but the idea was crossed out of his mind when he scoffed and shook his head. I'm fine. Let's just get back to training. Uh, okay. We continued to train through the day, switching between controlling my rage and letting it loose and training on the training dummy, or even a tree. The longer I went at it, the easier it became to control myself out of the frenzy of state of mind. That's good. I hope we don't become crazy. That's what I'm hoping for. By the end of the training, I was able to do Sh Sergeant's move just without being able to knock Dummy off its post. This was infuriating, but I had to remember I wasn't going to be the master of everything, nor was I strong enough in the first place. I was a human and not a demon after all, let alone a brute demon. I was learning how to defend myself. Okay, everybody, so we're going to end the episode here, and things are getting interesting, and I'm kind of curious what sergeant is like giving shifty eyes to diana about i know diana acts like a bitch to everybody because she is commander and that's her way because she's a badass bitch like that but i feel like aside from seto everybody doesn't like her i'm just getting that vibe especially even when i was playing eric's route i just got the vibe especially shadow i don't think he really likes her that's the vibe I'm getting. Anyway, this is very interesting. I hope I made the right choice in picking Sergeant to be our trainer because I trusted Seto. I don't know about this guy. But hopefully making the right decision, I'm really scared. And who the hell was that voice? Is that Morgan Freeman? Is that God? Like, I need to know these things. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about Sam's route so far. Remember to leave a, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And hopefully I will get the good ending of this route because I'm really scared that I picked everything wrong like I did with Eric. I got lucky with Eric, let's just say with that. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!